What's going on YouTube? Clover Bills here back with another Scarlet by the team building video. And today we're going to be looking at Great Tusk. Now, in all the recent tours, uh, you know, Great Tusk has been rising in usage. Uh, so I figured it now is as good of a time as ever to do a team building video around it and show uh, what I think could be a pretty standard, very consistent, easy team to use to pilot, at least in the beginning of Series 2. Uh, so this way you can get your feet wet and see how it is uh, to try uh, and use Great Tusk. So basically, you know, it's in a way has a lot of similarities to, to Iron Hands uh, in the fact that both of these have like a bucket loads of HP, bucket loads of attack, and a bucket load of defense, right? It's all triple digits uh, for all three of these. And then at the same time, they also have relatively low special defenses, and they most often carry an assault vest. Uh, although Great Tusk has a little bit more variety in terms of the items it can use. I've seen like Life Orb, I've seen Booster Energy, I've seen Focus Sash, uh, mainly because uh, with the Sash build, you might say, why? Well, that's because they run headlong rush and close combat. Uh, you know, you're dropping defenses with both of these moves, so uh, it's kind of hard to make use of that Assault Vest, right? So this is why a lot of these uh, use a Focus Sash, but uh, I have seen some builds where they just don't care and they just run, you know, <laughs> a Life Orb with Protect or like an Assault Vest, right? But you also have that fighting coverage, um, and you know, which makes you weak to Fairy, makes you weak to Roaring Moon Acrobatics, right? So, you know, it, well, this one can kind of neutralize it because it has the electric typing, but uh, the fairy weakness is still there, um, so you have to team build, you know, at least something with like steel coverage or a steel type on your team, uh, and you know, that'll help alleviate that weakness, right? But unlike Iron Hands, which has like pretty darn low speed, uh, you know, speed types uh, can get it. Great Tusk actually has respectable mid-tier speed, right? 87. So this one can actually function in Tailwind, whereas like Iron Hands, even if there is Tailwind on your team, sometimes it's still very hard to like outspeed things, right? Because like... You know, you don't even put that much speed here to begin with, right? So if you just put like, like even like this much under Tailwind, it's like 146. It's not really outspeeding a whole lot. Um, so, you know, there's that. But at least with Great Tusk, you know, under Tailwind, because you have like 30 more speed, you know, you can outspeed pretty much the meta, you know, and without too much investment here. But yeah, that's the idea here. So you have like a good physical attacker. So now what you want to do is, you know, again, I always like to say, uh, you pick a strong Paradox, you surround it with like a pretty strong Fire Water Grass Core, and then the last two slots are like your niche options, or you know, just something to help alleviate some matchups that maybe Great Tusk or the team in general would probably have uh, some trouble with, right? So, from here, what we're going to do is now pick the six mods, and you know, it's starting with uh, this Fire Water Grass Core uh, that I like. So, I like Talent Flame, first of all, you know, for a lot of reasons uh, on Great Tusk teams at the moment, because Basically, you can go with Tailwind, right? And then what you can do with Great Tusk is you can Earthquake next uh, to Talonflame, right? And that was something that was consistently done, you know, within the la like the last week and a half or so, you know, just to like Earthquake spam, you know, it's it's very easy and very standard, and you know, it's not too much brain cells need to be thought when you can just click Tailwind, click the Earthquake button, right? So that's also really nice, and you know, you may have seen stuff like this with Talonflame. Great Tusk, and then Gold Dango, right? And I like this a lot because for the same reason, um, I said I was going to do the Fire Water Grasper, but I revealed the Steel type. But basically the same concept, right? Just like in Series 1, instead of Great Tusk here, you had the Garchomp, right? And, you know, with Garchomp, Gold Dango, and Talonflame as the core, you know, same idea. You're able to Earthquake next to Talonflame, or you're able to just click Tailwind, click Make It Rain, bring one out, and when one falls, bring out the other one in the Tailwind, and you would just go from there, right? So it's a similar kind of deal, you know, with that ground coverage, you know, which is really important, you know, in, in the Iron Hands matchup. So Great Tusk does well there. Uh, so all the more reason to run it. But again, similar concept. So I'm just going to put these two ground moves back. Uh, but yeah, so then again, what's our Fire Water Grass Core? Uh, we do have the Among Us, of course, you know, something to help uh, in Trick Room. And, you know, with Goldango with having Nasty Plot, we're able to help redirect and set that up. You can even do like Goldango Mungus leads in certain scenarios. Like if they just go like Trick Room out and they lead so passively, like you could just set up Nasty Plot in their face and then just like, you know, not make them click Trick Room and then just click Make It Rain, you know, stuff like that. Uh, then from here, you can do the Iron Bundle, of course. Iron Bundle and Tylen Flame lead is, is very good in like mirror matchups because like you can click Priority Tailwind. Uh, and then you can just click Icy Wind and then you have the speed control for life and then, you know, Great Tusk and Gold Dango can just come in and just either click Make a Rain or Earthquake from there, right? So then as like a finisher, right? So like you have uh, this 
this core of you know talent flame and mungus iron bundle right this is your fire water grass core you have a strong physical attacker you have a strong special attacker now i need like one more like closer i need another finisher i need something for like maybe uh in case great tusk can't do the job you know i need one more faster stronger physical option and this is where again i like to pick the rowing moon if you notice i, I like rowing moon a lot <laughs> just because you know it's my kind of pokemon right where you have like a lot of speed you know a lot of bulk except for defense and then the hp is also really good right i, I love bulky sweepers if you haven't said uh, if you haven't noticed even since sword and shield i always make them bulky i always make them slower so you know i prefer the bulk in the long run but yeah this is it so you know and now what what this what this uh allows us to do right is because the tailwind is here i don't have to put tailwind on roaring moon anymore i can use that slot and get another attack in right which is really really good in terms of like flexibility right so but anyway this is the six uh again the whole idea is you set up tailwind great tusk is great into the iron hands matchup uh, great tusk is great <laughs> Uh, and it's a great physical sweeper overall. And then what ends up happening sometimes too, is if this is Terra flying, which it will be, you can also Earthquake next to your own Rowing Moon, right? And that was a thing that was done in like some of these recent tournaments. You had a Dragon here where like you had either Hydreigon or maybe even Dragonite and you could just Earthquake next to it, right? So it made a lot of sense. Sometimes you might see Tyranitar in this slot. Um, you know, I've seen that. Even like Sylveon in this slot also made a lot of sense, uh, but you know, I, I went with the Roaring Moon option. I think uh, it's just a really, really good Paradox Pokemon, right? But um, either way, so this is the this is the six, and I, I, I like it a lot. So let's go ahead and uh, reveal the GIFs. So we have Great Tusk here. Uh, we have the Talent Flame for the Tailwind support. Then we have Goldango as your special sweeper. Uh, Iron Bundle can be also a, a special closer, special sweeper, but mainly used for like Icy Wind stuff. Freeze Dry against like opposing Roaring Moons, opposing Great Tusk. Right, it makes a lot of sense. Your own Roaring Moon, you know, just for like that big physical sweeper that can come in in the end game and finish the job. Maybe even lead it. Like you could do like Iron Bundle and then Roaring Moon leads, and then just from there have like either Talon Flame plus either Great Tusk or Gold Dango in the end. Right, so it's very very flexible. And then of course Amoongus comes in in the back, uh, just for like redirection support or like trick room games. Right, so that's the six. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off these move sets uh, and these items. And, you know, and then we'll do the, the EV spreads and a couple of test games, right, on Showdown Ladder. So let's go from there. Okay, so we'll start back here with Talonflame. So just to keep things, uh, like, standard consistent, uh, I do like Talon, uh, of course, Tailwind. Uh, then from here, uh, Priority Brave Bird with Gale Wings is also really nice. Good, strong uh, stab move. And then will o -Wisp, you know, you can neuter uh, those Iron Hands, those Roaring Moons, Opposing Great Tusk. will o -Wisp is great. Now, again, you can force them to Terra Fire, but that's why you have the bundle here, right? You can pretty much just like make them do that and then you have an advantage there and then taunt is really nice you can deny setup you can deny other tailwind you can deny other trick room you know it's just a really really good move on talent flame i like the covert cloak here just in case they want to try and lead the iron hands and go for the fake out stuff uh it's not going to work right and even like soul cure damage <laughs> right or like secondary effects you know the, the talent flame can you know still set up and do just fine great tusk here so yes you guessed i like to play the assault best way uh, and then Ice Spinner, I believe, to me, Ice Spinner is like a must on this thing, right? It's so good against Roaring Moon, you know, if, if you can't touch it, you know, if it's like Terra Flying. Ice Spinner is great. It's good against other flying types. It's good against, you know, the grass coverages. Um, it's just a very solid, uh, consistent move. And then over here, you can do close combat. I think it, it's very, very good stab. You know, it's just a lot of power. Um, it makes a lot of sense, you know, but I've been experimenting with like knockoff, not knockoff, uh, Brick Break. You know, because there's that screens team running around, you know, the, the 45 mice team uh, along with Ali VGC. And, you know, I just wanted to like, man, if they set up screens, I'm kind of I'm kind of in a tough spot here. So I kind of needed a way to break that. So, you know, I, I was like testing both close combat and brick break and both were fine. But it's just like when I ran into that matchup, I was like, oh, man, I cannot break through this. <laughs> so I just slapped on brick break here and it, it, it was it was good. All right. Then Goldango here, so make it rain Shadow Ball, of course, you know, Nasty Plot and then Protect. And I like to play this offensively, Life Orb, and we're going to use like a, a very bulky uh, Goldango, a very slow, bulky Goldango. Same with Great Tusk and also the same for Roaring Moon, believe it or not. But the whole idea is like you're, you're trying to, you know, utilize this Tailwind where you still outspeed the meta, but still have the bulk where you can like take these hits, right? And then just KO them right back. Um, and it makes sense, right? Because we're a life orb user, so you kind of want a lot of HP to compensate for this, you know, one teth reduction in your HP, right? Every time you're attacking. So 
that's how I like to do it with Life Orb. Among Us, of course, Regenerator, uh, another standard set, Rage Powder, uh, Spore, Clear Smog, and then Pollen Puff. You know, the healing is nice, you know, especially with Paired with Gold Dango, right? If you're losing all this HP, you can heal it right back. Same with Great Tusk and Roaring Moon. You know, it, it's just a really nice move. And then uh, with Pollen Puff, you're able to deal super effective damage against like another Roaring Moon, uh, even, you know, a, a Brute Bonnet that's rising, even Meowth's Karata that's still running around a little bit. Um, Pollen Puff just makes a lot of sense. Bug coverage is good in Series 2. It's, it's nice. Um, and then over here, Rocky Helmet. You know, just a little bit of chip damage uh, against physical attackers like an Arcanine that wants to try and break through and go into the Gold Dango. This is why they run uh, safety goggles, by the way. So, you know, there's that. But either way, you know, if you don't like Rocky Helmet, there's a lot of options. You can go Citrus Berry for a little bit more recovery. Um, it's also fine. Uh, or you can use Cobra Berry, which uh, I've seen a few now. Uh, because uh, the the Roaring Moon acrobatic stuff, uh, it does a lot of damage. And, you know, if you don't EV your Amoongus properly, it'll just KO it. So you could just compensate that if you want to do a Cobra Berry spread. That I think that's okay. Um, you can even do Mental Herb, right, in case you get taunted uh, by, you know, either a Mouse Hold or another Talent Flame or something else with Taunt. You can do that. This is like at least four or five items that's good on Amoongus. It's really up to you. For the sake of the video, I'm just going to put Rocky Helmet and then you... You, you can choose uh, whichever item you like. All right, Iron Bundle, Focus Sash, of course. Uh, I want to just click Icy Wind to the to the cows come home, and then you know, just go from there. Freeze is really good against another Great Tusk. Hydro Pump is also really good, and and you know, and in rain teams, you know, the Iron Bundle does it just smashes right because you can just freeze dry the Palafin, you can freeze dry the Pelipper, freeze dry the Amoongus. All right, and they and if they have a dragon on their team, you freeze dry that. <laughs> so. That's the problem I see sometimes with those rain teams. You're just very weak to the bundle. And unless you have like a strong fire type or a steel type on that team, you're going to struggle. So the iron bundle um, is, is is good into that matchup. Um, Roaring Moon. So booster energy here, of course. Um, so throw chop, yes. All right. Acrobatics, yes, for sure. Because we have Terra Flying. But the move that has felt like really good and very free and I like a lot is Breaking Swipe. Right, and I did this a lot, uh, even in before series one began. If you look at that old Roaring Moon team building video, not the one we just did on the channel, but like the very, very old one, dude, Life Orb Breaking Swipe was doing so well, and it, it just it brought things down below fifty percent, and you know it just made things minus one, and it's, it's a really, really good move, especially against another Roaring Moon that doesn't have any dragon coverage. You just click Breaking Swipe, you shut that thing down, and um, it, you go from there. But this is it. This is the six. Uh, I'll do the Terra options later at the end, right? And, you know, I always like to do that. I, I want to do the EV Express first and then do the Terra options. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, hopefully you like the movesets and the items. But now we're going to just do the EV spreads. So, let's take a look. All right. So, now let's go back here into Talonflame. So, basically here with Talonflame, I don't really need that much attack. I'm not meant to do damage, right? I'm just meant to click Tailwind Bun, maybe click the occasional will o and Taunt. And then, you know, that's pretty much it. Right? Because I'm trying to just enable the Goldango and the great tusk for the most part and in some situations the roaring moon right so yes i'm gonna go max speed i'm gonna go jolly right but i'm not gonna go into attack right i'm gonna go into pretty much all of my hp right just to leave a little bit of bulk here just so that i can spread out my my evs and round them out but this is the idea just be really fast and be really bulky uh and then just click the occasional brave bird if i ever need to if there's like some amoongus or some grass type on the field that i really need to click an attacking move but other than that, I'm clicking Tailwind and Will-O-Wisp most of the time, and sometimes even Taunt. So that's the idea there with Talent Flame. Great Tusk here. So again, we are going to go Adamant here. Uh, we have a lot of attacks, so we're going to utilize that. Uh, but the whole idea with Great Tusk is, you know, with all this speed and under Tailwind, how much do I really need to invest? 107 already outspeeds Dragapult. So it's like, do I even need any more than that under Tailwind? I don't think so. So I'm just going to put this much, and that's it. I, I, that's all the speed I want. Now, I've seen some great tusks do this, where they go to like about 130, 236 investment for 137. And this is to outspeed Modest Goldango, right? So if you want to do that, sure, you can do that, right? And then you can just do something like this, where you just hit the bump here, and then just round out your remaining bulk like this, right? 192, a little bit here, and then the rest here. Something like this, right? If you want to do something like that to outspeed Goldango, sure. But we're not going to do that. We're gonna go a little bit bulkier, okay? Um, and we'll leave it here. 
Um, but in terms of, yeah, because this is like the third EV bump, by the way. And if you don't know what EV benchmarks or EV bumps are, again, comment in the video, but I explain it every time and I explain it during coaching, which I will advertise at the end of the video. But for the sake of time, you know, I will leave it here at the third benchmark. You see how you go from 196 to 198. The stat is increasing by two points, right, instead of one. And the whole idea is you have three points within this bar where the stat will increase by two points and it's every 80 EVs between each benchmark, okay? So um, go figure uh, with what you will with that information. But again, if you still don't understand, comment in the video and I'll explain it more. All right, then from here, honestly, I just want, uh, wait, let me take away some of this. Uh, I just want a little bit of HP, just like about 207. This is really all I need. You know, this is a very big HP set. You can even argue I could go more, but this is again, just uh, a nice little benchmark number uh, you know, it, it, 207 has always historically been good. And then if anything, you know, I just want a little bit more special defense. Uh, I think I just want this much. To, again, with, with all this defense, and, and I'm sorry, with all this special defense and this bolt, you're able to take those, you know, dazzling gleams, you know, from, from Fluttermane, those moon blasts, uh, you know, those roaring moon acrobatic stuff. You know, you have enough bulk where you can take that and survive, but you have to still invest and figure it out from the Pokemon damage calculator if you can. So uh, there's that, but this is the investment that I'm going with. Again, it's just meant to outspeed everything under Tailwind, you know, everything relevant, and then your third benchmark, and then the rest just went into um, my remaining bulk here. And again, I always make sure with the Assault Vest that I have a nice even number here. That's why I didn't do this, right? Because this, you get 91 times 1.5, which gives you a decimal. And, the, and, and Pokemon in this game, it rounds down, right? You don't want your defenses to round down. What the heck? I want to keep it uh, a nice whole number. So you keep it as an even number, right? And then whatever you have left, just put it. Okay, so with the Goldango, uh, and again, I'm just keeping an eye on Great Tusk here, right? Go Great Tusk and Goldango have almost similar speed tiers. This is a little bit faster in terms of like a base speed stat. But again, with 108 investment, again, I, I have the same goal. I just want to outspeed Dragon Ball under Tailwind. But I don't want to speed tie it like this, where like I'm I have the same speed set at Great Tusk, so, because then that means I don't know who's going first, right? And then it'll be just random. So I just want to go one point faster. This way, I always know my speed interaction, and I always know who's going to go first and who's going to go next if they're ever on the same field at the same time, right? So then from here, I'm just going to go to once again that first EV benchmark, not the second one, just the first, and it's right here. You see how you go from 174. So 176, you skip 175. What happened, right? This is a benchmark, a bump, as we say. All right, so I'll leave it here. And then I just want to go super bulk in the Life Orb HP, right? Because with Life Orb, uh, I lose a tenth of my max HP per turn. So I want to have as much HP as I can to compensate that, right? So if I go to 169, this is another one of those Life Orb numbers. Or you can go to 179, or you can go to 189. And this is where I will leave it. I'll leave it at 189. And you always want to end in a nine with the life orb, right? Because again, you want to optimize it where you have as much HP as possible, but you don't surpass the next threshold where you're taking an extra HP of damage per turn that you don't need to take, right? So for example, 189, what is 189 divided by 10? 18.9. You can't take 18.9 points of damage in this game called Pokemon, right? It's always going to be a whole number and Pokemon, it will always round down. So it'll be 18 damage per turn. But if you go to 190 and you break the threshold like this, 190 divided by 10 is 19 points of damage per turn that you're going to be taking uh, with the life orb. One extra HP, I don't need to be taking. So you always undercut the threshold by one and you end in a nine, right? Because 189 will always be 18 damage per turn. 187 will be one da 18 damage per turn. 184, 18 damage per turn. So I don't need any of these numbers. I always just want the nine because either way, it's still going to be 18. So this is what I mean by maximizing your HP, but not to the point where you break the threshold. All right. So now from here, I just go into my damage calculator and I have to see like, what kind of, th what kind of investment do I need in defense and special defense to like live certain hits from certain Pokemon, right? So this is where we go here and we have to take a look. Uh, if we go into like Fluttermane, right? Can I live a standard Fluttermane Shadow Ball? All right, let's take a look. Uh, yes, I can, but you know, at, at the highest roll, I can barely live with like 4% left. So that's good. So without any special defense investment, I already know that I can live. Choice specs, unfortunately, is another story. So if they have choice specs, you're out of luck because that'll just kill you. And you can't really invest so much here because no matter how much you do, it's still going to kill you. Like this is still a pretty favorable roll for them. So, and then you don't even have any in your special attack anyway, right? So 
That's not good. So choice specs, you're out of luck there. What about like Roaring Moon stuff? All right, Roaring Moon, standard Roaring Moon, but just throw chop. So I do lift that, so that's very good. Uh, very convenient for me. Now, if this was Adamant, you know, I can invest a little bit, but there, let me just check some other stuff first, right? But this is like a standard Jolly Roaring Moon where you have as much attack as possible, but you don't surpass this. So I can survive that. Um, what about like Great Tusk? Can I do Great Tusk? All right, standard Great Tusk. Uh, unfortunately, no, that's going to be a lot of investment and it's not going to do anything for me, right? Because either way, it's still going to be a favorable role for them. So I'm out of luck there. Uh, if it was Earthquake, I think it's a different story for sure because it's a spread move. Um, and it is. So I can live that, okay? Um, with uh, just this Life Orb investment already. Um, if I were to invest this much defense, let's see if I can try to... Oh, wait, wait, never mind. I, I forgot. I, I do live it. What about King Gambit? King Gambit's around. King Gambit... You know, just like Kowtow Cleave, Adamant 252. Can I live that? Right? This is, again, how you do these these damage calcs here. Kowtow Cleave. Okay, this one is very, very doable, right? So let's just aim for this one, right? So just invest until I can guarantee this live. Okay, I think I got it right here. Right? So with this much defense investment, I can live the, the Kowtow Cleave, right? So I'm just going to put it like this. 68. And then from here, it's just like, well, what else do I need? You know, I have a bunch of EVs left. And then from here, if, you, if you're satisfied with, with this bulk, right, in defense, you can just either dump all of it into special defense like this, right? Or um, you can pretty much just, you know, take 80 EVs again. All right, just about this much. And then just put, again, over here, just to the benchmark here, right? So this is where... You know, again, I was talking about EV bumps. So if you want a little bit of a harder hitting gold dangle like this, uh, you can do that where you have like a little bit more special defense. That's fine. Or if you just want to go super bulky and just have like the first bump here because you have Life Orb and Nasty Plot anyway, then you can just invest more in the special defense like this. All right. And I'll keep it like this. But hopefully you just get some idea of how we did it. Right. But the whole uh, in terms of this calc, again, you're just meant to outspeed Dragapult, Speed Creepers on their Tailwind. And then you have enough life orb and defense investment to survive in adamant 252 uh king gambit and then the rest is just into your special defense right so go figure among us so among us again i like to go relax nature here okay just because arcanine and roaring moon are a thing and i don't want to die immediately from them so i want that extra defense boost i'm gonna go zero ivs here of course because i want to be the soul sting in trick room and the magic number for HP is always going to be 219 in this case, just because for two reasons. One, it puts you out of range of Final Gambit, okay, which would have been 217, right? But then with 219, I'm able to optimize the regenerator recovery, right? One third of your max HP. It's going to be a perfect 73. If I were to go to 218 or 220 or even 221, it'll be like 73 point something or, you know, 72 point something. No need for decimals. For HP, I want to have a perfect flat number. So 219 will optimize this one third number, right? Which comes out to a perfect 73. Then from here, I go into the damage calculator. I go into Amoongus. All right. And I invest uh, at level 50, 236 EVs for that 219 stat. Then I go into Roaring Moon. Okay. I go here, a standard Roaring Moon set. Acrobatics does a lot. Terra Flying. Again, we'll probably do a lot, yep. But then I remove the booster energy so it gets a boost. And this is it. So this is still very doable. Now I just have to put Among Us into relaxed nature, All right? And there it is. And now you can see, okay, yeah, I can definitely do this. So let's start investing into defense until I can guarantee this live. It's gonna be a lot of investment, but it's still very doable. And I know that because I've done this calc like 59 times <laughs> for a video and for coaching. So I know what it is, but I have to show you guys what it is. All right, there it is. So 196 investment will guarantee me the acrobatics live. So this way I can take another attack and maybe get off some kind of move, right? So there it is, 196. And then from here, just the rest in special defense, right? Iron Bundle is the easiest one. So again, just a timid 252, 252 set. Nothing else needs to be said here, right? It's a pretty standard set uh, with Focus Sash. So with Roaring Moon, all right, with Roaring Moon, so I'm going to do something a little bit different. I know some of you have seen my Jolly spreads, right, where you just have 187, um, you know, just so that you don't surpass the speed stat, right? This is the old Roaring Moon set that I used to run a lot, all right? And then this is just like leftover in bulk. But we're going to play it a little bit differently this time because we already have Tailwind. 
on the talent flame i'm gonna go a different route i'm gonna play this roaring moon slower but adamant adamant roaring moon with a booster energy oh my god there's so much damage like you have no idea unless you try it yourself you'll never go back once you do it uh or maybe that's not true but anyway so with roaring moon uh again i will get the attack boost from booster energy right so because it is my highest stat so it's like a built-in life orb, which is really good so i'm just gonna make this super bulky so honestly i'm just gonna go for this much speed 84 this will just outspeed um timid goldengos right and so this way i don't have to suffer from the silly make it rain stuff right because uh other than the goldengo itself the, these pokemon don't really want to be taking make it rain moves right especially if it was a fast goldengo with like a life war for example so i'm just gonna go to 150 that's totally fine um then from here i'm gonna either i'm so like right here you already reached the benchmark right you see 174 to 176 so like i want a little bit more of course um, the next one is going to be here at 84, right? 81, 85 to 187, right? So then I'm going to do another 80 EVs. Let's go to 164, right here. I'll leave it like that. And 198 stat with a booster energy is, is a ton of damage. Then from here, I'm going to go 212 investment. This is pretty good. 207, again, that magic number, just like Great Tusk. Um, this will, you know, uh, the Tyranitars are still running around. So, you know, this will also optimize for sand chip damage. You know, and that's also something to consider. Soft cure stuff. But yeah, breaking, you know, 207 is a really nice stat. Then from here, a little bit of defense. Um, and then the last point in, in regular defense. And I noticed also something with the, this damage cap on. Let me just bring this up here. Let me import this. And I want to see how this matches up with like a drain punch from um, an iron hands, right? So let's just go like adamant, bulky, roaring moon, right? Just to like call it something, import it. And just bring it up here. Adamant, growing bulky moon. And then let me just go to like Iron Hands, for example, right? Iron Hands, okay, 50. All right, let's say it's Adamant, of course. And then let's say it was Drain Punch, right? How does this, how does this take it? Does it take it well? All right, Drain Punch, all right. Does a lot of damage, all right? Um, if it was 76 investment, still a lot. If it was 156 investment, also a lot so you can live uh with this investment okay a plus 156 adamant natured iron hands this is to their second bump right so you can do that which is what i was aiming for if it was 256 um 252 i should say it is a roll okay but not a very favorable roll for them and if you even get off one breaking swipe on this thing um then you know you you can live it very very easily right so that's the idea there but the whole point again is without any intimidate or anything like that um, if it was second EV bump, um, Adamant Nature Iron Hands, you can live it. So that's what I was going for. So, you know, very nice, interesting calc for that matter. Um, but Breaking Swipe is a really good move in, into that, right? But that's it, right? That Those are our basic spreads here. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at the Terra types here. So the Terra Fire, I'm going to change that to Terra Ghosts. So this way I don't have to suffer at the hands of like silly little fake out stuff, of course. Um, Great Tusk here, I think Ground is still optimal. Uh, if you want to change this so you don't have to take like you know super effective like water moves or you know the flying stuff you know you could consider changing that um to maybe you know even like terra steel for example but you know i, I like ground for the extra damage here because i'm next to a talent fam. i just want to wipe the board clean gold is pretty good as a steel type you know just extra make it rain damage the amoongus because there's still like you know in dd armor stuff rising slightly you know i'm gonna go terra dark here makes a lot of sense Iron Bundle, uh, the, you know, you can keep it as Terra Ice for offensive stuff, or you can go Terra Water here, you know, to resist the Steel stuff even more. But I like Terra Steel in general, just because Iron Bundle is weak to, you know, grass attacks, electric attacks. So if I go with Terra Steel, you know, that also makes a lot of sense here. Um, then from here, Roaring Moon, I, yeah, we keep it at Flying, that's also okay. All right, so yeah, this is it. All right, so let's get this pace here. Let me just make sure I got all of the Terra stuff in. Yeah, I think this is pretty much it, right? And you can kind of see how the combinations and the combos work here with Talonflame, Great Tusk, Talonflame, Goldango, uh, Iron Bundle, Roaring Moon, um, Iron Bundle, like Talonflame stuff. Like it's it's just a solid, easy team to pilot, you know, trying to use Great Tusk. Um, and I think it's really, really fun. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is just show you like some basic sample battles from the test account. And, you know, then we'll just get you guys out of here from here. All right, let's take a look.
All right, he's got a funny balance team, right? With the Iron Moth and the Roaring Moon, right? And then there's King Gambit Sylveon, right? I like the Roaring Moon, King Gambit Sylveon stuff. I don't know about the rest of his squad. But anyway, this looks like, you know, if, if there's nothing here that's flying, it looks like, you know, Great Tusk kind of just smashes this, right? So, um, but what also can do well here is just getting the speed control in general and just going like Talonflame plus like my Iron Bundle here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do because I know he's got um, the Iron Moth to try and respect my... Michael Dangle stuff. So he goes for a caution to the Moth. I don't know. I mean, the but I don't know why he did that. So he's going for Sludge Wave. This is why Iron Moth has a problem outside of like Dandoja stuff, right? So because if you just run the Sash on the bundle, that strategy fails and you just take it out, right? So um, there's that. And now he just goes into Sylveon. So my idea here is to just chip the Sylveon enough so this way Gold Dango can just finish it off in the end game. Even if he does like throw spray stuff, that's okay. All right. And there's the Tailwind that I want. All right, so now Bundle and Goldango can just come in here and just pretty much finish the game, right? So, of course, everything fails. So here's the Great Tusk, here's the Goldango, um, and I'm going to go into my ground timing. I don't want to, like, just die right off the bat. So he goes into Terrifying. I mean, like, he kind of has to, like, make this play. He's almost forced to, but then he's just susceptible to the Great Tusk in the end, right? So it's like, what do I die by? Do I die by Great Tusk or do I die by Goldango? So I want to remove the Sableye here because... You know, that that was the more important slot. The Sylveon here, it doesn't really matter too much. And he went for Terror Blast anyway, so that's good. So now it's just Roaring Moon. But again, remember, I have Tailwind, right? So I outspeed everything here. This is just a simple Earthquake. He can't Terra Flying anymore because he committed the Terra to the Sylveon. So this is the freest Earthquake I've ever seen, right? There's the Earthquake. Roaring Moon, if it goes for Acrobatics, we should live anyway. Yep, see, there it is. Um, and now we just have one more turn and we just smash it, right? Now, again, if he protected and then maybe could have potentially picked up a KO, right? Because he did a lot of damage with that acrobatic, but apparently he did not have protect. So, um, or maybe he didn't think of clicking it, but I pre, I think I could have taken one more hit. It really all depends on what his uh, other move slot was, right? But, you know, he did have the attack boost, so, you know, he was going to be slower anyway, but this is why I like the value of Tailwind is important, right? So that's, that's how we uh, finish off that game. So let's take a look at another one. All right, we got this, uh, the weird ta Dandoso Tatsugiri one. This is the gimmick one. This one, this will never work in like the higher level stuff or like the tournament play stuff. So basically, again, if you don't know how it works, the idea is this Tatsugiri for sure has the toxic orb. It's going to kill itself. And then the Flamingo comes in, copies the Dandoso boost. And now you have two things on the field that have like these super strong boosts, right? And then, you know, even a Nyla can just click final gambit on, on something over here, right? But the idea, again, is like if I just burn everything, None of that boost matters, right? So here's the Great Tusk, here's the Talent Flame. So, you know, again, I saw that he didn't have any like flying resist other than the Flamigo, which I was prepared to deal with with like Wolos stuff. So here's Tatsugiri Annihilate. Again, this is totally fine. So there's the Endure, right? Here's my Tailwind. Here's my Earthquake, all right? Does a bunch of damage. He goes into Endure on his own Tatsugiri and then drops. And there's the Toxic Orb, right? So here's Dandozo, of course. Again, it's going to get all these speed boosts, but again, it's a two on one situation. So we just burned the Dandozo, congratulations. And now we just Earthquake it really nearly, nearly. And then there's that little bit of chip damage there. And you see how Great Tusk survives, right? And he just does more damage to himself. Now, I was, yep, yeah, it's a leftover stuff, right? So the Tatsugiri goes down. Here comes the Flamigo. And again, if I just hit the uh, Will O'Wis, I'm totally fine here, which I do. All right. The, there's the Brave Bird. He takes out the Great Tusk, but that's okay, all right? Little bit of chip damage there that's good and then everything here takes burn damage which is really nice and he takes even more recoil from wave crash so now we just bring in roaring moon and the iron bundle right because it now you know that those with special defense is not that good flamigo's attack is burn you know as long he's gonna click like maybe a potential fighting move so i'm just gonna like um go into uh my flying typing here he could protect here to like stall out this last turn of tailwind but you know how these people play they don't care all right, so there's the free jack. Goodbye, Dondozo. You did your best. And now here comes close combat. We're going to live that. We had a sash on him anyway if he went into that slot. And there's the acrobatics, and then it just dies, right? So, <laughs> see, again, if you just had, like, this protect here, you're like, the Flamingo could potentially go next turn, right? Um, the turn that the Dondozo was alive, right? You're not outspeeding the bundle anyway. Um, but at the very least, right, you could have let the Flamingo do something. But then either way, it, the bundle kills the... the um, Dandozo, and then next turn, Roaring Moon is just able to finish the game, right? Because that thing is burning, can't really kill the Roaring Moon. So that's it. You know, so you can see how some of the combinations work. Again, Talonflame plus like Gold Dango or Iron Bundle is just really, really, 
good or like Talonflame plus Great Tusk is really good. Um, and then just like Roaring Moon in the back end, just like cleanup duty is just really, really strong. You could even do like Iron Bundle Roaring Moon stuff. That's also a, a more aggressive lead, right? Because you're able to just click Icy Wind, outspeed everything, click Breaking Swipe, click Acrobatics, click Throw Chop, whatever you want. Um, but it's a fun team. But again, if you want teams made like this, uh, again, check it out on coaching on the channel. We just passed like 50 tier subs, which is actually really, really good. Um, but again, if you want a team built uh, with like full EV spreads like this, sit down in the Discord call with me one on one where I can teach you how to do these EV spreads. Uh, it's a tier three sub to the channel. Link is in the video description. Um, there's a join button with every video. So same idea there. If you check the comments section again, we, we also advertise it there. If you have a squad that you have yourself already, that's a tier two sub to the channel. All right. And you can just submit your PokePace to me over Discord. I'll take a look at it. I'll fix it up a little bit. I'll give you some feedback and I'll give you back the team. Tier two sub to the channel, same place. Video description, check the comment section or click the join button on the channel. We'll be back with another video in the next one, guys. Peace out and have a good one.